The Hair with the Dragon Tattoo is a dark movie thriller, and one of the most important aspects of the film's photography is its use of colors. The palette is muted and desaturated, with heavy blues, greens, and grays. So last week I shoot some footage and I try to get as close as possible to the moody look of this film, using some budget light and a little Canon ESM. I used these two screenshots from the movie as reference for recreating the look. For the interior scene, I took advantage of the natural light coming from the windows. As key light, I used a Godox and I bounced off a white fabric. I used a pocket LED light slightly behind my wife, motivated from the light source coming from the windows behind her. Then, in the background, I turned on a tube light to create a light separation between the face and the background. Finally, I add some fog to recreate a little of the atmosphere of the original scene and to add more separation of the characters from the background. So, in sequence, we add a soft key light, a rim light, a splash of light on the background behind the character, and some fog to add separation and atmosphere. I also changed the laptop back color and the logo. I filmed the scene of the car in the parking space of my house. I used panels to eliminate the reflection of the roof from the windshield of the car, and two tubes to lighten our faces. In post-production, I added the background, the reflection of moving trees in the windshield. I eliminated the adhesive from the car mirror. And I added movement and snow. So I filmed in 5K anamorphic mode, 14 bits, 100 ISO, and I used a Sigma Art 1835 1.8 wide open with a regular EF EFM adapter. This time I'll quickly explain only the color grade workflow of the scene shot in the car. So this is how I set my color management. This is our image of reference. And this is our image from the USM. In the reference image, predominates a color palette ranging from deep blue to cyan. And all the color is in the blue and cyan part of the scope. I create three nodes. The first one for my CST input node. As input, I used Rec 709 and I output it in DaVinci Intermediate Space. Tone mapping to none. In the row tab, color space and gamma to Rec 709. Then I set my CST out node from DaVinci Intermediate to Rec 709 space and Cineon gamma. Then I add the Fujifilm loot included in DaVinci. After the CST input node, I add a node for the exposure, which I lower a bit. A node for the balance, adding blue and twisting exposure and saturation on the dark parts. Then I add a parallel node for add density to the color. To this node I add a serial node and I use the first node in the HSL color space using only the SAT channel and disabling the other two channels. Then in my primaries I lower the gain. I use the second node in the HSV color space and as previously I disable the channel 1 and 3 using only the SAT channel. Then in my primaries, I raised the gain. I created a compound node and I labeled it as density color.
Then I created another parallel note for the skin tones. A parallel note because my wife and I have a very different skin tone. I qualified the skin tones with the HSL tool. For better isolation, I created a power and I tracked it. Then I made some adjustment twisting the balance, the exposure, the contrast and the saturation. I made all the same process with different settings on my skin. I created another node to make darker the dashboard of the car using a power window. Then I created a node between the CST output node and the Fujifilm LUT node where I add some grain. If we compare the scopes of the original scene and the one we created, they are pretty similar. And that's it! How you can create the girl with a dragon tattoo look and more than anything else that specific feeling with the Canon USM, a few lights and adjusting the look inside DaVinci Resolve. So let's see the final result and see you soon!